Around the corner comes a juggler. He comes up to you and says, You must be in a hairy situation with the wolves. Welcome, scholars, storytellers, and fellow babysitter DMs. This is a Level Up Corner, led by yours truly, Wizzo, as we delve into all the tips and tricks about Dungeons and Dragons. Today's topic is creating great NPCs, or more aptly, how to create great NPCs. Now, I know in that intro, your NPCs aren't that bad, or at least I pray they're not that bad, woof, but you have some more life to that NPC. And this NPC, or this introduction to an NPC, already exemplifies every negative thing that you can do. And we'll go over it as we go over the five rules that will help you create amazing NPCs for your game. The rules are as follows. Make them come alive. You have to make them pop when they have that introduction. Secondarily, you need to follow it up by giving them some personality. They can't just be a dull, drab, gnome, jester. Uh, no, 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 you need to have a bit more than that. The third is that you need to interact with your players, with the NPCs. Now, we'll go into this a little bit more, obviously, as the video goes along, but interacting with players is crucial, as this can help flesh out NPCs and make them seem more alive and flow with the conversation in your game. The fourth is don't be a dick. This is very important, one that most DMs and GMs out there do not remember or just conveniently don't care about it and throw it in the trash bin. And the fifth and final rule that you have is to have a game purpose. There is a reason why this NPC is existing. It's not just because you want to have a gnome jester, although you might just want to have a gnome jester. That gnome jester has to have something that they are doing. And we'll go into all the different game purposes that you can have in a bit. Now to expand upon the first rule, making them come alive. This is usually done in the introduction of a character. You need to make sure that it feels like it has more color. In the intro, it seemed like a bland, boring bit, but you don't even need to raise a lot of inflection in your voice. All you need to do is state that the gnome jester comes around the corner. Already, you had no erase. We already know a bit smaller. We already can get a jester. It's a good idea. You, they have a frame of reference. Once they have that frame of reference, you expand upon it. The gnome jester comes around the corner in his brightly clad garments with the puffy sleeves. You don't even know what they're called. Who knows what those puffy sleeves are called? But you're giving an idea. You're building something more, adding more details to that framework. You look at his clothes and you see vibrant colors everywhere as his hat dangles from side to side with bells. Now you've already given him a bit of personality just from the clothing that he has. He's bright and cheery from the colors. Colors can be important. And also the dangling bobbly bits can actually have an impact. Same with a straight laced individual. Someone who comes up and is in a very tense position. You can get a whole different interpretation of an NPC just from that alone. Beyond this, after you've set the scene a little bit from that NPC, you can have gesticulations where you expand upon our previous example. The gnome jester goes around the corner with his puffy sleeves, brightly colored attire, and dancing bells. He um, moves jovially side to side as he says, Hey there! Already now, we can tell that this guy is a bright ship fellow, not just from his attire, but from his inflections, his emotions, his facial features, his gestures. His gestures of putting his hands on his hips and his shoulders this way is a bit more playful already, instead of a, Hey there, this is more tense. But if you go, hey there, with a little pop with your arms, then you can tell that this character is jovial. And in this appearance, that character is alive. It is so much better already than that bleak, bleak dab, drab introductory character. This character has some personality and has something to them. Next, you want to add a finishing touch. This finishing touch could be just about anything. For us, I, I would have stated the finishing touch would have been the bells, but you can uh, have an extra finishing touch to, to uh, solidify, to pound home. This character is not serious and jovial. You can uh, tilt your head side to side. Hey there, how you doing? They're right there with a constant tilting head side to side. Blech, that already kind of joggles the vision a bit, but you can tell that this person is maybe not mentally sane and uh, either they're pretending which could be something later on, 
or that is just how they are. Either way, it is quite terrifying. So now the character is alive. They're not a blank cardboard cutout. But the second thing you'll need to do is give them some personality. We've already done that a little bit with them coming alive. In order to adhere to rule number two, giving them some personality, we need to have three separate things. The first is to give them eh, one to two traits. The second is to give them a profession. And the third is to give them a purpose. We're going to walk backwards. So giving them a purpose. The, this jester's purpose is he wants to make people happy. Okay, fair enough. His profession is jester. We've already solved that. But there has to be one or two extra traits. We've already stated jovial with our introduction to the character. And we could have something else. We could have evasive in his conversation. We could have sly, something that just makes it a little bit more interesting when you converse with a character. And giving that character some personality is the embodiment of coming alive. Exemplify those traits and add something more to the conversation. But you may be asking, Wizzo, this seems pretty bare bones. We only have a repeat of the introduction of the character. We're more so just putting forth that personality already. What about any other interesting parts? Well, my friends, this is where you can work with your players, interacting with players. Number three, your players may ask something ridiculous. They may ask, oh, what, does the jester have a rat head on a staff that he jingles around here and there? And you say, why, yes, of course he does. Now he has a rat head on the staff. And the players ask, well, what's his name? And the jester can respond with you having some of that improv as ratty, haha, <laughs> or some other name that you come up with. And you can let the players actually bring the characters to life. And just like part of your plots and how we make our D, D stories they're not books they're not purely written by us they are built with the characters as well the players it's an interactive story and they can even have some extra roles in creating your npcs they can add to them they can try to put forth ideas and you ultimately can veto them but most of the time these ideas are actually either fun or good not always both but having one of those two is enough Speaking of your players, we can't forget our fourth rule, and that is don't be a dick. Now, you might think, whoa, hold on there. I gave them a very nice NPC. Uh, how many times has your NPC backstabbed the players? Not this NPC in particular, but how many times have your NPCs done that? Well, I can tell you that most beginner DMs, even I myself for a long while, had a problem. And this problem was that we wanted to make the story more interesting. We wanted to make our NPCs more interesting. So how do we make them more interesting? Why, we did twist, of course. So why not do the oldest twist in the book and make that friendly NPC be a traitor all along? Well, when you do that five or six times in a campaign and you're wondering why the players aren't trusting anyone, you have only yourself to blame. And us DMs don't actually keep track of how many times we do this. One campaign, I realized I did this about six times, and the players didn't trust any NPC for some reason. Hmm. Hmm. Wonder why. That's why you need to make sure that your NPCs aren't dicks. They are accurately portrayed for their place in the world. What do I mean by this? If you have a, you know, thuggish guard he can be a he can be a bit of a pain but he's not meant he's not there to solely screw over the party you can have a merchant who's he is a little bit prissy on his prices and doesn't want to give a good deal he wants the good deal that's not him being a dick to the players that's just who he is as an npc that's what he would do in the world without them do not change your npcs be more of a dick because your players are interacting with them. I cannot stress this enough. Us DMs need to hear this multiple times because we do it far too often. And the last part, our last rule, is to have a game purpose for your NPCs. Yeah, Jester's cool and everything. He's alive. He's interacting. He has a personality. The players have added to him. You're not throwing the Jester at them to just try to win over the party trust and screw them over. But what's the substance behind it? Why is that NPC there? Are you just wasting the player's time? Well, if you don't have a purpose, you are, ultimately. And there are a few different ways to uh, make your NPCs have a purpose. These three variants are plot progression, which is the most common we have, lore, and setting. Now, uh, plot progression is pretty obvious. You see that guy in a corner of the tavern. 
He has a cloak on, and he's solitary alone, taking and drinking his mug. Just nothing else, just sitting in the corner. Obviously, that's plot progression. He's there to give you a uh, plot hook, whatever, that's fine. We all understand that as a DM, we use that most often. Second is lore. Now, lore doesn't have to be an exposition or a lore dump. You don't need to have them come to the librarian to get something else. Now, the jester alone could hear something wonderful. The jester could have been there so that he could try to talk to the players, and if they say that, yeah, we're going to be going to the goblin caves, and then he'll say, oh, well, the goblin caves. I've heard many things about the goblin caves, and then he informs the players about it. This makes it so the players, one, know a bit more what they're walking into, and two, get more interested in your world because it directly relates to them and what they're doing. If they're not going to the Goblin Caves, who cares what's in the Goblin Caves? Who cares what's in North Mountain over there? That's not part of our quest. But if you give them this lore, not only are they a little bit more invested, but they'll want to research things. Because if you know what's coming up, it's generally easier to deal with than if you're surprised. If you know three orcs are around the corner and you can plan for it, it's usually easier than if they just surprise you and get you know, a surprise round and extra attacks. It's, it's the same idea. So your players will want to learn more about lore if you make it useful and don't push it. It's only if it comes up in conversation or if they're searching for it. The third is very underappreciated, and that is setting the scene. The jester does not need to be there for plot progression or lore. The jester could be there to help the players have a fun time with the carnival they're in. I mean, they're here, they're, they're, they need to be grounded in the idea that this is a fantasy world. This jester is here to try to push forth that idea, to make it so that the players are having fun, or at least realizing how wacky this whole place is. And that is a jester's role. You could even have this with different food vendors or even merchants. Their whole purpose is not to push forth lore or to push the quests. It is to make the players feel as if they're in a fantasy world. Immerse them. So setting the scene is a very important role with some NPCs. And you don't have to have a lot for these NPCs. You need to still adhere to the other four principles, obviously. But you need to uh, have it so that they are making this world more immersive if you are setting them there just to merely set the scene. With these five simple rules you are able to create some amazing npcs as long as you keep these rules in mind and follow them your npcs will come alive pop have some conversations interact with the players make them feel like they're actually you know getting somewhere not feel betrayed constantly want to interact with your world and through the purposes that they give encourage your players to try to reach out more and find what is there but i'd love to hear from you all what do you think is the best way to make an NPC come alive? Is it that they need to be a backstabbing traitor every single time? Do you really want to go contrary to these rules? What do you think about it? Definitely leave a comment down in the comment section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe so that one, we can keep giving videos to you about these awesome DM tips and tricks and try to reach more wonderful people. Always remember that your players love and appreciate you. So keep rolling, my friends. Keep rolling.